This episode of the Crackcast is brought to you by our friends at BigDoor24.pl. It's a new service that not only matches expats with local property experts who speak their language, but it gives you cash back discounts on successful credit applications. So go to BigDoor24.pl. That's BigDoor24.pl. Find out all the information you need to get the mortgage you want. Again, BigDoor24.pl. Make sure you use the special promo code Crackcast to get a great cash back offer. And now, on with the show. Welcome back to the Crackcast News, everybody. We're enjoying our uh, long holiday weekend. Actually, by the time you hear this, I think the weekend's going to be over and you're going to be back to work. So, uh, sorry about that. Uh, my name is John. I'm joined by Dr. Mike. Dave is here. Josh is here, too, but he doesn't have a microphone. Say hi from across the room, Josh. Hello. Yeah, there he is. No microphone. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so uh, it's May 4th, Star Wars Day, as we record this. Star Wars Day? Yeah. May the 4th be with you. How lame is that? No? Are you impressed? You like that? Let's just move on, shall we? <laughs> anyway, yesterday, May 3rd, May 3rd, a big holiday. As you know, if you listen to the episode that we posted a couple of days ago about the uh, the holidays this, these, these past few days, uh, Constitution Day, and of course, in today's world where everything is political and everybody's ready for a political fight, uh, no shortage of things to fight about, including uh, Dave Donald Tusk and some uh, interesting remarks he made about Poland's Constitution. Yeah, well, he went on a bit of a tear at uh, Warsaw University, uh, you know, slamming the old constitution around the place. And uh, Tusk is quite a, a blunt way of speaking, uh, which is one of his qualities I admire. But uh, yeah, in this case, he was delivering a strange message that uh, Polish politics should get out of the gore and start talking to each other while at the same time absolutely slamming peace constantly for, uh, as he says, on a daily basis, disrespecting the constitution. So it's just like a partisan political attack, given his history as the PO leader? A constitutional talk in general this week, haven't we? Uh, you know, it's it's become a, a hot button issue. Due to going on about uh, the constitution as well, wanting to change it so that the uh, EU and NATO membership are parts of the constitution. Tusk is banging his constitution in Warsaw University. Everyone's getting very emotional. Mikey, I think at this point you should uh, step in with a, your calming influence and uh, cut through all the nonsense. Me calming. Well, uh, thank you for thinking that, but I'm guessing you're you're high or drunk or something. If you think that's how it, how I affect people, um, with Tosca was actually kind of hilarious. Uh, he's known for being charismatic and like the calm kind of statesman. But when I started watching that debate the other day, uh, he was anything but charismatic. He seemed kind of off of his game. I don't know. Maybe he's been out of Poland for so long that he just doesn't have it anymore. And he's talking about like, oh, usually I prepare notes. Usually I know what I'm, you know, I, I, I have my speech, you know, from the heart. But today, you know, I needed one thing and he like holds up the constitution to, to, to the, you know, sound of applause. But the way he was talking, halting and kind of unsure of himself, it just wasn't the tusk I knew from years past in that sense. Uh, and you're right about the fact that he's talking about how we need to stop playing the game of like us against them, one side against the other. There needs to be unity and we need to unify all together to be against the people that don't want to be unified with us. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like listening to this. I'm like, dude, seriously? <laughs> all, um, we keep saying, and, and I still suspect he's, he's, uh, weighing up a run for president in 2020. Uh, but the polling isn't, isn't very favorable towards him. I mean, it's only about 34% across the board. I think he should return to Polish politics. Do you think he could win the presidency? Uh, he'd definitely be a strong contender, that's for he sure. Would, I mean, but the question is, uh, June 4th, he's going to be uh, back in Poland as well, you know, during the uh, commemorations of the 30th year of uh, Poland's like partially free elections. And a lot of people are saying that maybe then he'll announce like a new, not political party, but new political movement, which would be, you know, him getting backing for a presidential run next year. But you're right. He's not as popular as he used to be, and there's a lot of people that don't like him. So, and would it be fair to say Duda coming out with this stuff about altering the constitution is a shameless sop before the European elections? That's why why I read it. I mean, what do you think? Kind of is, but it's also like counteracting all those statements saying that peace wants or to like anti EU, anti -EU yeah. or they want to plan a poll exit. So they're trying to show like, no, we don't want Poland to exit. In fact, we'll we we'll even stick it in the constitution. Show it'll be worded in a way that means absolutely nothing and has no weight. Because the uh, opposition have framed themselves as the European coalition yeah. now, so they're, they're trying to steal back some. They're of trying to get the, uh, yeah, steal some of the wind out of their sails with that. Uh, John, the EU always makes you very angry. Oh, I love the EU so much. Yeah, you say here. 
What? What do you think about all this constitutional grandstanding? Uh, I think. Uh, well, I'll, I'll ask Dr. Mike the same. I'll, I'll ask Dr. Mike the same question I asked you that you didn't answer. Do you think Tusk? <laughs> do you think Tusk's comments, Tusk's Tusk's comments, were motivated by his own partisan political history, or was it genuine concern that there is something fundamentally wrong in Poland? Ah, oh, well, look, I'd give him the benefit of that. That question was for Dr. Mike, by the way. I'm oh, sorry, you <laughs> asked both of us. Well, you had your chance, but you missed. You you just you chose to pass on it. Uh, whoever, just answer it. Somebody. Mike, you go ahead. I'm afraid, actually, that he doesn't really uh, recognize the difference between the two, that he honestly thinks that his partisan views are the ones that are the best way for the nation to go forward. He s might sincerely believe that the nation is in trouble uh, because of, you know, the other side of the political spectrum. And he thinks his point of view and his uh, political background is the uh, backers are the best way to move forward. So he might be blinded by his own kind of, say, uh, bias in that sense without even realizing it. I have to say, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned it previously on the show, but I recommend to our listeners to check out the three um, uh, Inside Europe. Europe documentaries, which Tusk features heavily in his, uh, when he speaks in English, he's got a lovely, uh, blunt way of talking. That is, is he better now than he used to be? I haven't heard him, heard him speak English so, for some time. Uh, he gives a good, really good performance in yeah. his documentaries. It's not like really polished English, but very um, emotional, straight to the point, oh. uh, blunt. You know, Morawiecki is quite good. Yeah, very smooth. And Tusk, at least when he started, it was kind of hard to watch him uh, in, in English, really. Actually, you said something to me that I can't get out of my head what? ever since you said it. This... Uh, that he's a bit lizard-like looking. Morawiecki, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If <laughs> you ever since he said that, if you believe in the lizard like, conspiracy, the lizards ruling the world, Morawiecki is exhibit A. This guy looks like a lizard for sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay, it's before everybody uh, listening falls asleep as we talk about Donald Tusk, uh, let's move on to um, a different but kind of related, or maybe it's not related. Uh, Dave, my big news this week in the world of Polish judges, which is a sub subject we've talked about quite a bit in the past, uh, maybe not the sexiest of subjects, but really important. So what happened this week in terms of judges and, and their role in, in society and government? Well, um, some, there were some more amendments to the laws uh, rolling back some of the proposed changes that have not yet come in, with one of which concerns judicial immunity. Uh, Mike's going to give us a little bit of extra background on how the actual disciplinary procedures work outside of judicial immunity. But judicial immunity is just the principle of your decisions not being held against you and you can't be sued for them, which I agree with 100%. So I'm glad they're, they're rolling that back. But there is a, a theory as well that, that they're doing this just to protect the changes that they've already made. Uh, and that's where something I'm keen to get Mike's take on. Well, with the immunity, uh, in Poland, judges have had a wide spectrum of immunity for generations to the point where, you know, if you're caught drunk, uh, behind the wheel or, or stealing from a gas station, you can always just pull out your, like, oh, I'm a judge. I have immunity. So things that are totally basically unconnected like with their professional there. duties, right? Exactly. Their uh, private lives, basically. And uh, there's and if th there ever is a situation where the judge uses immunity, then it doesn't go to the police or anything like that. It goes through these disciplinary courts to which the judges themselves judge. They add their own little closed body. And, you know, it's friends of friends. People have known each other for generations. It's usually a slap on the wrist or something like that. The, uh, the government for the last couple of years has what been trying What about for more, like, serious crimes? I'm sure it's never happened, but, like, you know. Uh, it would have to be really serious for them to do anything, I think. And usually in that situation, it still has to go through the disciplinary yeah. courts of the judges. And by the in that situation, you're like, you know what? We're taking away immunity, or the judges pr suggested that he will abandon his immunity. Because the judges routinely get away with things like drunk driving. Hey, Mike, don't prosecutors have a similar immunity in Poland? I think they do. Uh, they do, and a lot of like, uh, uh, same with like, say, members of parliament, et cetera, et cetera. They have a lot of immunity for things outside of just actual th their actual Good work. Good context, because these are the little procedural creases that we miss in the uh, the kind of English speaking media when you're reading about these stories that they don't have time to squeeze into 1200 word articles. And you can. Hey, talk wasn't about that? Uh, wasn't that Pablo Escobar's strategy to get elected to the Colombian parliament so he would have immunity from prosecution? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was. He needed to be a senator, I believe. Oh, my or, God. So that's in Poland, if you can get elected, suddenly you've got to get out of jail free card. Elected. He did? Didn't he? I don't remember. I remember yeah. that was a strategy to, to solve his problems by being elected to parliament. Or with the state. It was really the most bizarre story. Let's I mean, talk about Escobar. 2000, <laughs> I, he killed over 2,400 uh, military and police officers. At tanks. one stage, he had a tank on the streets. Let's of talk Oregon. about Narcos. Narcos rules. Yeah. Uh, do you like uh, Diego Leona's performance in oh, Narcos? Yeah, it's, all good. it's all good. It's all good. Okay, we'll talk about Narcos another time. The um, moment where he first gets <laughs> the new San Emilia field. Another up and running time. Mexican desert is just one Tangent of, of a tangent there, yeah. 
So uh, what's the bottom line with the judges here, Mike? Or is there a bottom line? <laughs> no, sorry, but basically the story going on right now is that the EU will be uh, giving a decision or re rebuttal yeah. to what Poland has been doing with its judges. And the decision is, or the infra is going to come out just before the uh, parliamentary elections, okay. May 26th. So the government is a little worried. They're like, ah, this might make us look bad. So they're bringing these amendments to kind of soften the changes they've done over the last few years to um, not make it look so bad. Let's move on to something more interesting, like erotic fruit. Yeah. <laughs> Great story this week, uh, all over social media, all over the new, the real news as well. Uh, Mike, it's it begins with a banana. Tell us all about it. Well, it begins with the uh, National Museum up in Warsaw uh, s uh, announcing that they will be taking down installations that involved, among other things, a like a video presentation of a woman eating a banana. In a somewhat suggestive way, uh, it's basically a, a cry out against like commun co commun consumerism and you know sexuality, etc. This was filmed in 1973 or something by a well-known. These are old school photographs. Yeah, this isn't anything new. Okay. Uh, it's come and gone. It's been presented, and you know it's been up for a while now. And the university, I mean, not the university, the museum said, you know, we're you know it's we're going to be putting something else in that area, so a place of the like museum, a rotating exhibit, exactly. And well. People jumped at this saying like, oh, this is censorship. They're, they're being prude. They don't want people talking about sexuality. This is the government's you know, overstepping its bound. It's uh, you know, against freedom of speech. So a lot of people decide on Facebook to you know, put bananas on their profile pictures and go eat bananas in public places. Yay, democracy. It, it really takes an awful lot of effort to uh, film yourself eating a banana. It's a perfect protest, really, isn't it? I mean, this is a pro I've never protested before. I've never held a banner up. I've never gone to a, a main square angry about an issue. But, you know, if I hadn't known about this in time, I could have gone on this. I could have done this, you know? So, wait, Mike, sorry if I wasn't listening when you said this. What? <laughs> what who, who first protested and, and why did it first become controversial? This How time? much sleep did you get last night? Yeah, not much. <laughs> Uh, the protest happened on Monday where, you know, people got in front of the museum, but it's, it's, Ooh. uh, basically everybody who's opposed to the government, but it was a couple of hundred people, mainly feminists and, you know, people from Novo Cessna, et cetera, et cetera. Wait, people opposed to the government, feminists are protesting the pictures or protest protesting the removal no, of the protesting pictures? protesting the removal. And Nobody's the removal was triggered by something simple, like it was time for them to go. It was, it was time, time for, for something else. And, you know, uh, uh -huh. they're so saying, it wasn't like there was a priest and they're saying, how dare you? No, no, there, there's some talk about the uh, director of the museum saying, that he got letters of people not liking this. Some people were suggesting he got pressure from the government, but they have to remember this is a state museum. So there was the distraught mother mentioned in one article whose boy was traumatized by the content of uh, that museum. Uh, exactly. He's traumatized, right? But, you know, these poor boys saw some boobies. Some installations and artwork comes and goes in a museum. You know, a museum can only show so much of what it has in its, you know, in its warehouses. It's like a fraction of a percent. So, except for a few major pieces, you know, stuff comes and goes. And they basically decide, okay, it's time for this to go. This decision was made apparently several months ago. This director really, he just signed off on it. He wasn't the only one who decided on it completely. What was the artist's name again? Uh, don't make me remember it. It's like somebody who's actually quite well known, but it's the kind of art that I really don't give a rat's ass about. <laughs> this sounds like a, a kind of a semi-manufactured crisis, perfect for the Facebook world that we live in. It is true. It's like, because, yeah, you just show a banana and like you can show to the world how uh, in touch with politics and how much you demand, you know, freedom of speech and et cetera, et cetera. How socially true. conscious you are, huh? It's perfect Italia for a, 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 LL or something. I just, Italia I just LL? I don't know. LL sounds for. But the, uh, the director uh, did acknowledge her contribution to Polish art. Well, this, this cry is, is, I wonder if she's still alive, this other artist. I mean, given that the photographs are 50 years old, I don't know if she's still around. Anyway, great for her career Clearly, if she is. We, we struggled to get her name, and you have to ask a specific I don't know. Yeah, I'm just going to throw out random that, questions yeah. that none of us are pre prepared to answer. Uh, okay, fine. But um, are we going to deny that there's something overtly sexual about a woman eating a banana? Jolek was the, the guy, the director. The director. Of course not. Everybody knows that there's supposed to be some uh, sexual context in that sure. as well. It was, it was a banana and not a, 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 an apricot for a reason, you know. Yeah, well, nobody ever denied it. It was supposed to be dual symbolism, the decadence of a Western product and the sexual symbolism of eating a Yeah, but like the Facebook, the Facebook reaction to it, the people oh. posing for pictures eating a banana, aren't they kind of making fun of people who for some strange reason, sexualize the eating of a banana? Isn't that kind of the point, or no? So confused, though. Yeah, so well, they're, they're making fun of people that take it seriously. You have no microphone. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, and Drunken it, ass left and, your microphone. And, and John, like you said, this it was just because it was so easy to show your opposition to the government just by you know posting anything with a banana. People ran with it. You know, it didn't cost them anything. Yeah. They're not going to lose anything. That's what I was it. saying. Yeah. I mean, it's like the ultimate kind of... 
you know, 10 second protest, isn't it? It's like the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> oh, it doesn't me. mean anything. And Celebrity, you know. and someone's poured water over me. Right, right, right. It's like an easy protest against something that's not actually a problem. So perfect for a, a, a 10 day Facebook profile. Although pick. I have to say, it's got me interested in visiting that museum. Yeah? Yeah. And that, this is what the, like, the National Museum in Warsaw, like the National Museum. The National Museum. I didn't realize I had such a, um, such a you know, cornucopia of erotic art. <laughs> so it is erotic then. It's not just a woman eating a fruit. It's a woman simulating, okay, let's, let's just say it, simulating a blowjob. Yeah. And that's why you want to go. I never denied uh, it was sexual <laughs> in nature, the symbolism. I've already clarified that. Well, I, something tells me by the time we publish this in like two or three days, this storm will have blown over completely and people will forget. It's one of those controversies of the week. I, I, I predict a nationalist uh, Apple-based backlash uh, <laughs> supporting <laughs> Polish fruit and, uh, you know, yeah. eating up that uh, excess after the Russians banned it. Uh, the so. dairy lobby will introduce whipped cream somehow as well. Oh, yeah. Can't, can't wait for those protests. What happened to that fruit ban Russia introduced? Did, was that ever dropped on the Koya? Or uh, it, not exactly, but it, they got around because basically Russia banned and Poland's you, you fruit. Know. But <laughs> a lot of this fruit was then being sold to uh, Belarus and other countries, and they were selling it as their own to Russia anyway. So We should do a special on black market apples. <laughs> oh, that'll get the listeners in. <laughs> 10,000 clicks in the first day. <laughs> Let's turn to... Uh, Let's turn to sports, or sport, if you prefer. We don't talk enough about sport. <laughs> don't you prefer sport? It sounds like Kent Brockman there. Sport, <laughs> Kent Brockman. A uh, couple of stories. Well, the first story is kind of sport, kind of politics. Agnieszka, <laughs> Krakow's own Agnieszka Radwańska, uh, women's tennis player. You know she has career earnings in excess of $25 million. One over, I think she's won 20 ATP tournaments. I mean, it's a pretty impressive resume, I think. Yeah. She never won a major, obviously. Got to the final once, was beaten. Well, you can, women. I mean, $25 million, no major, I'll take that. I mean, why not, right? Well, How many, no major? Did she ever play in a major? Played in a major I final. I mean, uh, the final of a major? Yeah, she played the final of Wimbledon, got her ass kicked. But I, I want to say Serena, but I'm not 100% sure. Probably wrong about that. One of the Williams, well, they, they won everything else in the last 15 years. 15 years, so <laughs> entirely possible. Well, anyway, she's in the news, not because of her tennis accomplishments, but because of an offer of... Uh, of honorary citizenship, which is, I'm kind of confused about because she is a citizen of Krakow, like in reality, so not just honorary. Mike, uh, what was the offer all about and why is it controversial? Well, the uh, citizenship is something like the equivalent of like getting the keys to the city. So being, you know, honored by the city as, you know, uh, a son or a daughter of Krakow, etc. And, you know, she was raised here. She was trained here. She's known as a Krakowian. She's, you know, taken part in a lot of like local uh, uh, institutions. But they they didn't actually, the council didn't vote on her uh, at that point. It was just the committee that decides whether or not her... Uh, proposal to be honored in that sense would go through. And the committee said no. The official reason being that she's too young, which is complete BS because, you know, it depends more on her stature and her public figure stature, which would be a reason. But it turns out that, first of all, her parents have been supporters of uh, p piss politicians for years. Uh, peace. Say peace. <laughs> Sorry. You're going to confuse people who don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I can never get out of my head the fact that like the two main political parties are uh, uh, peace and, and boo. And yeah. boo. It's, like, it's like when I made that recognition like 10 years ago, it's just something that's stuck in my head since then. Uh, <laughs> politics is shit. We yeah. finally went there, people. <laughs> Taking the high road as usual. Because yes, uh, her dad was actually in the committee that helped get Duda elected. And she's also been seen in uh, protest for like Smolensk several years ago. You know, she was never like uh, up there, you know, waving a flag, but you know, she was in the crowd. She never got too political, but she was seen at those kind of rallies or with those kind of people. And, and a lot of people are suggesting now that they didn't She's want to- She's into the old Smolensk uh, conspiracies. Yeah, no, she would just show up, but she never like voiced her opinion on this or anything like that. It was just like, you know, somebody took a photo in the back, said like, oh my God, it's Zaratvinska there, you know. I have to second say- Second row, third in the back. I have to say, it's one of them where you look at it. I didn't one of the guys on the council say he wanted to abstain from the vote or something I thought in the article that there was a vote no there wasn't a vote it was uh, the commission uh, the committee to decide whether or not to uh, push her uh, nomination forward yeah no it, it's something smells rotten here mm -hmm. I mean she's the greatest sports person to see is probably ever produced. it should have been a given it should have been like a nice little you know just to be clear game. here it, it, female tennis is not an easy sport to climb to the top of it's an amazing achievement to do it uh, is she still active by the way or no, retired no, she just no, she retired. retirement oh. last, last year or this year 
So basically, the, the controversy boils down to the fact that some people think that she's on the wrong side of the political fence. Yeah. That's what it seems like. Yeah. And the, the city councils will be naturally controlled by the other side. And there's a reluctance right. to right. honor right. her uh, achievements, it seems. Well, sticking with... Oh, she is young, so they can get away well, with it for a few years. And they can say, then they well, can give it to her and say, look, we gave it to her when she's only 35. What do you sure. know about? Sticking with sports, uh, but uh, a different story here. Um, Sebastian Janikowski, who, Janikowski, as we say in America, uh, <laughs> if, he looks so. That looked like he enjoyed saying it if, that way. If you so don't much. know, if you don't know, he was because he just retired last week. The longtime uh, place kicker for the uh, Oakland Raiders and the Seattle Seahawks, I think, for a short time period. Anyway, nineteen seasons, calling it a day, calling it a career. He's it's, it's over. Uh, oh, good question. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think he played think so. in a Super Bowl you know. like his second but, uh, I mentioned this because it's interesting to me. I'll give you a bit of, of, of context, a bit of background. About 15 years ago, 18 years ago, maybe a long time ago, there were two Polish um, ice hockey players in the NHL, the world's best league, right? It was Mario Strakowski and Krzysztof Oliva. And both of them were what we would call journeyman players. They were, you know, good enough for the league, but not a star by any measure, right? Well, it was funny to me because in the Polish press, especially in the print media, in the newspapers, you, you pick up the sports page and the headline would be, for example, Mary Strakowski gets an assist. You know, Krzysztof Oliva scores. And it, it was, if you didn't know better, you would get the impression that they were major stars in the NHL and they were not. But, you know, Polish sports fans and Polish ice hockey fans in particular were justifiably, you know, understandably You'd proud of the fact around there were two Polish here. guys. Wait, 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 wait. So, in other words, the, the media coverage was way out of disproportion to their actual contributions yeah. to the league. However, it has to be said, to be fair, in the in the case of uh, Janikowski, Sebastian Janikowski, he really is or was among the elite players of that position. He hold he he holds or held for a brief time until it was broken the record for one of the longest kicks ever. You know, 19 years in the league, he's doing something right. Yeah. He basically never misses. He he was you know he was very good and he was very if you could see this guy he's you know he's built like a, a a tank you know he doesn't have the standard kicker physique he's big and thick and mean and you know he would get in on tackles <laughs> never ran away from the play like most kickers oh, do. He's so excited <laughs> <laughs> and they have to punt on the the special no, no, place teams. kicker. He wasn't a punter. He was the place kicker like kickoffs oh, and field yeah. goals. Sorry, and but the special teams and the kickoff yeah. like the, the yeah. owner, that's that's big, him. And he would just run, you know, at full speed downfield looking for a tackle. But here's the thing. I have my own personal uh, uh, recollection of, of Yanukovsky in his early days because I'm not sure about how it worked when he was a kid, but he immigrated to the States, to, to Florida. That's how I know about him uh, when he was a teenager. And he ended up being recruited to Florida State University, which is where I went to school. And he was a kicker there, the same university, again, where I went. And did you know he, him? He, I didn't know. He, uh, he came about three years after I did. Cool to hang out with he you, was three or four years after I did. <laughs> anyway, he made the headlines for all the wrong reasons. He was constantly in trouble. That's more. Constantly in trouble for, you know, the usual public urination and Serious just being right, Exactly. And ass. here's the thing. And this wasn't reported much after he became a pro, but he it's got kind of arrested him. for trying to bribe a police officer in Tallahassee, which is where the, the school is. Now, Sorry, maybe in Poland, small town Poland, that might work. But that is a big, big mistake to try to bribe a police officer. And it's just they're waiting for somebody to do that so they can throw you in the darkest level of their dungeon. The offer Ponsky. And I have no idea what the offer was. Uh, he had a record for that, among other things. And it, it only fits that he played for the Raiders. If you're listening and you don't know, the Raiders are the, the blue collar hey, semi criminal team. Yeah. It is Oakland. Yeah. <laughs> and Yanukovsky, just uh, he's very rough around the edges. I would say it that way. Very rough around the edges. Not sure you, you would want him living next door to you. Uh, but he's got, you know, he's in college, forty Come million on. dollars in the bank. So maybe he's a little more civilized now than he was then. Yeah, I imagine uh, he's been a lot more civilized for a long time. So anyway, maybe. Poland's single. Uh, player, uh, and you can you know debate. He's born here, grew up in Florida. You know you can, that's a separate argument. But uh, Poland's one NFL player is gone, so maybe uh, maybe he'll be replaced soon. Maybe it'll be a long time before Poland has another NFL player. No idea. Seems like uh, 19 years at the top is, it requires an awful lot of dedication. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, he's very good at what he did, and I he probably could have stayed around for another few years uh, as a kicker if he wanted to. But again, because he's got so much money in the bank already, he figures what what's the point. And he's got a good life now. So I think that leaves, in, in, in America's top sports leagues, leagues, I think that leaves Marcin Gortat in the NBA as Poland's one representative among the top level of, of American yeah, sports. He's like a free agent. And yeah, he's like, a free agent waiting to be He's going to be signed. You know, like first, as yeah. they say, you cannot teach height. And he has it. <laughs> and so he'll get a job somewhere, for sure. 
Uh, but no more NFL, no NHL to my knowledge. No, no NHL, no Major League Baseball. Baseball, not a big thing here. And one guy in the NBA. So uh, down to one. Yeah. Something else going on this week. We've talked about this probably 10 times over the last six months or so. Increase in the price of uh, tram tickets goes into effect. Dun, dun, dun. Or went into effect on May 1st. Everything's more expensive now. And apparently, I say apparently because I haven't seen it myself. Apparently, the tickets are like physically different. They like they look different. Anyone anyone seen the new tickets? Uh, I'm too cheap to buy tickets, so I just ride around for free. Uh, As uh, this, this magic pass, you can ride the bus with them for nothing. Yeah, good. Nobody's seen, nobody seen the new tickets. Nobody. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, apparently there are new tickets and they're more expensive. Maybe they got a aesthetic artistic upgrade since we have to pay more to see them now. Uh, my beloved 280 20-minute ticket is now 340. I don't know. It's only 60 grusha, but it just seems psychologically, it seems like a lot. 280 to 340. It's breaking that critical three three zwati. Sorry, Dave's having a sneeze attack here. Voluntary. I'm, I'm sorry. Is it allergy season for you too? to voluntary sneezing. It's, 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 I have a little bit of a uh, sniffle oh. situation. What's that time of the year where the pollens and everything in the air? And... No, I don't. So no? Mm, I no? No? No, no. Anyway, uh, tram tickets more expensive. Again, we've talked about this many, many times over the last few months. Just but a ba- warning. Just a warning, a reminder that you need more change with you next time you hop on uh, the tram. Uh, Dave, you mentioned this to us a couple of days ago. Uh, you even sent us a nice picture. You are very impressed by the city's uh, plans and hard work on uh, getting flowers out and about in every part of the city. Yeah, well, when we covered the uh, city budget a few months ago, uh, there was a hundred million zloty, I believe, uh, a fair amount of money anyway, set aside for greening the city, which was, uh, you know, one of the main parts of the strategy was what they were calling green boxes. So where I live, um, around the corner, uh, the entire street was uh, treated to uh, um, wooden posts with ropes uh, around them um, and then they uh, dug up the ground they planted uh, you know put moss or whatever you put down there and they planted lots of green moss? shit you know that brown stuff it's stuff, the stuff barky barky bark, brown stuff bark, bark, bark. And I'm not much of a green finger I grew that. up in the city alright but anyway the effect is uh, there were trees li- trees lined anyway you know but now on top of that you have these lovely green boxes all the way along and when you look up the street now it looks entirely different and uh, it really cheers me up I have to say this time of the year the city does do a really good job of uh, planting new flowers and trees, maintaining what's there already, yeah. just generally making, you know, keeping things looking good. The hard workers at a uh, municipal, yeah, whatever you call that department of the government, municipal work department, the greenery people. I, I don't anyway, know. Uh, I will attest to that because they were laid in January. I remember thinking that was so weird, digging up the ground and doing gardening in January. That is such an excellent idea. So uh, you know, as soon as spring came around, I was I was curious to see if what they planted would would grow and spurt, and it did. There's a there's a place in the planta over there by Bunker Stuki, right behind that museum that's on Platz Chapinski, and they always have really nice flowers there. I don't know what kind of flowers they are. And people always stop and take pictures, and people always pick them. Of course, the ones right next to the pathway are the first to go, and then progressively they get you know, more and more disappear as people step over the railing into the flower area and pick more and more. And so... Um, everything annoys you. Doesn't everything it? annoys me, I guess. <laughs> I've seen but, these flowers no, the other day, so, dude. Don't even start me <laughs> off. <laughs> but, I mean, not only do they have to deal with the, the weather and everything, but the, 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 the city department of green flower people things, they also have to deal with their flowers being vandalized and stolen as well. So they have to replace those two, you know? So Yeah. Ongoing no. challenge. Yeah, it's a big deal. Anyway, good job, guys. Thanks for keeping the city looking. And everything, it on top of that, everything's that. green anyway right now because of the rain. God, the rain, the weather. But everything's very green already. So the city's looking very verdant, very a, lively. I was charity today. And, uh, I, you know, you got your daisies, you got your buttercups. What are the things that when you blow them, you know, that you, dandelions. Dandelions. dandelions, that's it. That's been wrecking my head all day. Thank you. We've got that tree here. I forgot what it's called in Polish and in English, but... Uh, it produces these little cottony, wispy things that slowly disappear as the breeze kind of takes them away, and they accumulate on the. It looks like it's snowed in in some places. You know what's that tree called? Do you know um, anybody? Yeah, snowy, springy. But you know, some in, in about a month or so, you'll see places where it looks like it's snow. There are so many of these things that accumulate, and those are the things that really trigger my my allergy. I knew problems. there was a moan coming. I just yeah. knew it. It's such a lovely tree, but it kills me. Mike, you don't know what it's called? I have no idea. I'm not really all that agree. You know what I'm talking about, yeah, though? I know what you're talking about. You're so far awful from the old uh, 
from the old hay. Oh yeah, allergies. I get I get serious uh, allergies. This uh, April and May for about a month or five weeks. There's something out of me at all. I think it's rapeseed. Rapeseed, this yellow stuff you see in the countryside. If you go on a train somewhere, you see seed. Yeah, <laughs> a murder seed. We're asking for it. There's fields and fields. <laughs> oh, no. no, I did not laugh at that. I did. There are fields and fields of this yellow stuff. I thought it was mustard, but somebody told me it's rapeseed. And that's the stuff apparently that adds to my allergy woes at this point. But nobody else here has allergies. Yet. Nobody has cool. al- Josh, you don't have allergies this time of the year? Shoulder's fine. Thanks. I'll get like about uh, one week in May, June when I have runny nose and watery eyes. He says he has one one week in May, June. Right? I know. I just realized that when he started talking. I just remembered that. You need to fucking remember today. All right. Moving on. Moving on. What? Moving on. Uh, this Slick is a, stuff a, on the crack house. Yeah, this very professional, film. very polished production yeah, here. Absolutely. Last week we published an episode uh, about the May holidays, and we mentioned the Mayufka, the holiday period, where people make like an extended holiday out of the out of the week. A uh, good chance to maybe get out of town, go out the countryside or wherever. And part of that is uh, grilling, and we didn't really touch on it during that episode, but um, but uh, we were thinking how Poland has a really interesting and kind of well-established grilling culture in your time here haven't you seen this a lot where people you know love to get a grill to, how however however modest the grill itself is they'd love to get a grill going and enjoy some uh, sausage and karkovka and whatever of karkovka karkovka rules yes. yeah it's yeah. been marinated for days yeah, I agree. It's a, there's a great little grilling culture there is. In, uh, in Poland. It's a little bit different compared to maybe the American culture. I think Australians are really big on grilling as well. But um, so much in Ireland, too windy and wet. Oh, that's true. Um, but here it's not really focused on the equipment. I was younger, I mean, my boy, a gas what? barbecue, right? You know, okay. one that could be kind of operated in any conditions. Yeah. <laughs> you only figured out a couple of months ago later, you know, out in the business terrain, grilling up my cheeseburger on a Friday, that it was all a ruse to get me to cook my own fucking dinner. Traumatic childhood memories. No, but people who are typically aren't obsessed about the equipment, they don't necessarily have to have this massive grill. Uh, I love going to uh, to Tesco or to Aushan, and you see those little 25 Zwati grill kits. Be there. I think they're literally disposable. I think you well, can use them are, once. You can also buy the literally disposable ones, like a Zapkas, <laughs> which are just, you know, tin foil with, like, coal yes. inside as it. As long as you're using charcoal, yes. the food will taste amazing. Yeah. Those uh, disposable grills are great, as long as you're using uh, charcoal. It's not about the grill. It's about the experience, I guess. You know, the nice like weather. You one of the Kopiec, uh, like Kopiec Kraka, for instance. Nice uh, view. Yeah, you've yeah. you got the f- v- uh, view of the city. Cook your own you lunch. A couple of beers out there, you know. But Dave, you have some strong opinions on the subject of sausage. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's no way to make that sound uh, dignified. Sorry. <laughs> I just can't stop thinking about grilling burgers in my backyard when it was pissing uh, around. Anyway, it's never um, getting, but no, sausage. In Ireland, you say in Ireland you have proper sausage. You're not impressed with Polish no, sausage. Pro- we have the best sausage on earth. Okay. Bar none. Okay. Hands down. Okay. It's called breakfast sausage, which really reduces, uh, in my eyes, it's important to... Uh, you know the meat community. Uh, I just, I just think Irish pork sausage is, is the best, tastiest sausage in the world. Super Queen sausages, John. I'd walk back to Ireland for a Super Queen sausage, straight off the pan and lovingly folded into two slices of white Brennan's bread, dripping with real Irish butter as the butter melts into the sausage. You're getting aroused here, staring into the distance here. Uh, mm. So it's like a religious experience having these sausages, a sexual experience. Yeah, but they're not really traditionally, uh, you know, grilled on barbecues because we don't have many barbecues in Ireland. It's not just one of the wettest countries in the world. Uh, if you just picture Ireland geographically sitting out there at the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, it gets a lot of wind. Okay, it's not not optimal for a, a grilling culture. Um, okay, fair enough. Fair this enough. Is more pan fried sausage I'm talking about, like in in the kitchen. Yeah, so you wouldn't no. have like in the fucking bathroom. Well. <laughs> You couldn't be so I, I opened the door. I got to be fair. I made it easy for him there, didn't I? Fair enough. Um, can we get a, a quick mention uh, of uh, of a Krakow institution uh, on the subject of sausages? People always go on about the Holotargova blue van sausage. Guys, what's your, what's your take on the on the Holotargova sausage? Start, talking about the blue van. Isn't it remarkable we've made like 100 episodes and never mentioned the blue van? Well, oh, we don't talk about sausage that often, do we? I mean, come on. Who is the blue van guy? I'd love to know, uh, you know, something about the man who lives in the blue van. The blue van is uh, the sausage salesman who lives at Halitargova. His sausages are legendarily delicious. But in Poland, there's somewhat of a culture 
of once it's locked in that that's good, you know, like uh, good lud or something, you know, a large queue develops. And, we got to uh, do an episode on, on standing in line for stuff that confuses me. Krakow, yeah. has, Krakow has some uh, legendary culinary institutions that Polish people will queue for quite a long time to get their hands well, That's on. why I'm skeptical about the Blue Van Holotogowa sausage. It's good because sausage, man. People go there at one in the morning when everything tastes good, right? And so I think maybe the recollection of just how good it was is I've exaggerated had, the I've next morning. So sober several times I live. Really? Close oh, it's close yeah. to where you live, isn't it? So Same here for me. It's, it's, it's a perfectly good, good grilled sausage. Yeah. But is, Better it, than, is it so exceptional that it deserves special mention? Look, it's flame grilled. Okay, so uh, the method of cooking is absolutely perfect, you know, for what uh, what you're trying to achieve there, which is that lovely, uh, what's the word, carbonized kind of taste like on the outside crispy, of it. Crispy, the yeah. bronian action happening there, yeah. This would be a great moment for Josh to jump in if he hadn't forgotten his microphone. He uh, definitely has the words too there, late. right there. You know. So you think it deserves the praise? Uh, you know what I like it uh, and I like the fact that he never upgraded the van you know it's still the same shitty blue van oh, it's like the Nieveska Niska it's like a famous old communist old era blue yeah. van yeah sausage okay well <laughs> we should sausage uh, hey. we got to get together our, we, we have to put together our, our own uh, little cookout some we can go what is it 15 Zwadis at Jabka right we should do a series <laughs> on the, those type of places, like the kind of... Uh, we should queue. We should get the old uh, microphones out on the oh, street. Oh, that's a good idea. And talk to people who are queuing. Just a queuing. few days ago on the first, I was in Platznova. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, Platznova. And the good lud there was uh, pro- easily 50 people in line. Same with Platz Volnitsa. And I don't understand it. Good lud is it's regular ice cream. It's just it's nothing it special. America, and it's weird to see in a shopping center that is so enormous with so much space, a massive queue coming out of a shop, like snaking around the what place. One of the other things people here stand in line for, uh, Ponchki sometimes on uh, F- uh, Fat Thursday. Yeah, there's that one on uh, Starvation, is it? Uh, uh, there's all, they're all over. And uh, the Zapia Kunk also confuses me. Are they really that good that you could stand in line for a long time for those? You know what? They're better than other Zapia Kankas, but that's a very low base to start uh, from. You know, just get a fucking pizza. Yeah, exactly. Last thing we'll mention before we go, interesting uh, kind of funny news out of England this week. Uh, somebody with a very expensive bicycle, like a specialist racing bicycle, uh, had it stolen. And sometime later, uh, using GPS, I guess, he tracked the bike down to a shop in Poznan. And with the help of the local authorities and the police, he was able to get his bike back. Uh, Guys, some obvious jokes to be made about uh, stealing stuff. I mean, these were famous jokes in the 90s in Germany where they were complaining about Poles uh, stealing everything. So in Germany, they would say, like, you know, if there's a pole in your car is already here. So I'm, (laughs) I'm guessing it's the same with bicycles in the UK right now. The bike ten- theft is a massive issue in Dublin. The government introduced a, uh, a, a scheme giving you a tax break on uh, bikes, which uh, led to lots of purchases of thousand euro bikes and lots of theft of thousand euro bikes. It became this, it became this uh, industry with its own gravity. The new bike tax scheme, uh, stealing, and uh, yeah, bike crime. Bike crime is massive. I think it's Dublin. a big deal in any big city. Oh, it's big here as well. I do remember hearing stories where in Krakow, you know, people bikes would just disappear left and right, so the cops would actually set up bikes that looked, you know, beautiful bikes, new bikes. They would just put GPS trackers on him. The bike would disappear within a day, and they would just raid the address. And it Find turns out, of them. yeah, a hundred of them that were being sold on Allegro for it's half price. What a smart yeah. tactic, you know, police, yeah. You talk to people from Amsterdam, you know, the Dutch famous for their bike culture and whatnot, and they'll tell you it makes no sense to invest in a nice bike because it will be stolen. You just get a junk bike, which is also going to be stolen. And then after that, when you, you need a bike, you can pay 10, 15 euro to some street person who will who give you a new one. Somebody else. Exactly. And if you have a nice, like a proper bike, you have to keep it under your bed, basically, uh, to keep it safe. And that's why this guy in England, I don't know where it was stolen from. A message from. has resonated in my hometown. Uh, everybody's flying around in these 2,000 euro specialized bikes with their Lycra on, flying around the place. <laughs> you know, uh, I wish we had... You see a lot of Irish sausage down here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you know, <laughs> The other good thing about it, what do they call them, uh, men and middle-aged mammals? M- mammals yeah, <laughs> he couldn't resist. <laughs> it's an acronym for what? Middle-aged men in Lycra. Middle-aged men in Lycra, mammals. Yeah, but there's a lot of that in Dublin, huge amounts, um, unfortunately. Well, this kind of ties into what we talked about last week, I think, in the news with the electric scooters and the potential theft problems there. I just wanted to say as well... What? Because I like interrupting you, A. But B, the yeah. Amsterdam point Mike made is, is is very relevant because it slows people down as well. If you're only driving a really crappy bicycle, there's no point rushing. Like, you know, you're not trying to set a personal best on the way to work, which is a real issue. Didn't I, I mention with... Amsterdam? I'm not Mike. Yeah, John mentioned Amsterdam. Excellent. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Then we all were. understand each other now. Fine. Well, that's going to be the news this week, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll try to do better next time. Uh, get, make sure to give us a like on Facebook. Share the episode with your friends. Get the word out that the crack cast is where you need to go for all your crack I'll out say hello and Poland news. Sent, uh, a nice message on Facebook. And, what was? Oh that? yeah. Um, yeah, the guy whose name I can't remember, which I would have checked had you told year, me earlier. One year, one message. Thank you. We listeners. got a really nice message <laughs> from a listener from far. Liverpool, I think, this week from Liverpool, yeah. telling us that he really enjoyed the show. We really appreciate it. We appreciate it so much. We forgot your name. And yeah, we wanted to keep it anonymous anyway. We haven't asked him if we could use his name on air anyway. So, oh yeah. Uh, so you. there's legal message. issues involved here. Exactly. We've got to get a release signed by him before we can use his name. Anyway, special thanks to you for listening and and for your uh, really nice message. We appreciate it. And uh, everybody else will see you next week on the Crackhouse News.